I'm a disciple's girl in a disciple's world. Golden mana I shall garner. Oh, sorry, you caught me mid-floor there. And welcome back to another Gweebtastic, that's our language for lovely, episode of Disciples 2, the Legions of the Diamond campaign. Well then, I think it's more or less time to bring this episode to a close. Um, uh, mission, sorry. <laughs> Not episode. I uh, love cutting these episodes short. Uh, I do, I do, of course, enjoy doing it. It's not some sort of uh, hidden message there. Uh, first of all, we're going to get this orc back to his little chums over here near the shop. Um, I think it's time to lay down the smack upon Mr. Godfrey because he's been a little bit cheeky. Although it does mean getting a little bit close to these guards, which are presumably. Oh, okay. Guarding the way to Astaroth, I thought we were going to get a little bit of dialogue, but no, sir. So let's get rid of this guy. And then we'll send Bizik back to the safety of the city. Okay, that's good. I'm going to keep this thief round about here, poised and ready to do a little bit of damage to these guys. Um... In fact, I might even get him to sneak up and insert a, a spy into their army, which will which will be handy. Um, anyway, let's move the orc guy over here. Uh, use Mango to clear up the waters and things around here, and then uh, we'll resume on the next turn when we're ready to move Mr. Grebe over here. Onward to the next turn, and here comes Comrade Greeb, moving a little bit further towards his friend down here. Looks like it's going to take four turns, so uh, we're not going to bore you with every single turn. We'll we'll catch up when he's just about to to reach his chums. In the meantime, um, I will just be using Mango just to gain a little bit of X more XP, and that's more or less it, really. There's there's not a lot else for us to do here, and then we've got to take on. Uh, this area, and also this these haunted halls, which should be exciting. So, I'll see you then. Oh, just as we were about to finish our mini quest, Astroth comes along and spoils the party. Cowards, I will destroy you myself. You will regret your treasonous acts. Does that mean he's going to start moving? I mean, we can see him up here, but there's still been no sign of him uh, taking any action yet. Oh well, time will tell. Come on, Mr. Grebe. Join your Greeby family. Oh, orc. Brother back. We give good help. Look in big city for treasure. Oh, an ancient relic. We like hot skins. We help you. Are we going to get to control them? No, we get a permanent grebe. And these guys are going to get in the way so we can't get to these treasures. Um, <laughs> so are we going to have to kill them? I like said look in the big city for the treasure. Does that mean it's going to be in here? In the army screen. It is. Ancient relic. Uh, that could come in useful. If we don't have anything else to take forward to the next mission, at least we would have that to give us... Uh, rather nice big cash injection at the start of the uh, mission. But now that we've done that, there's nothing else we can really do. So it's time to take Mango up to the, the lair of Astaroth and then we'll get this party started. Whoops, one other thing I need to do before, <laughs> before I forget and move on is uh, build the upgrade structure for our mage unit. Now... We've got quite a lot of area of effect damage from the, the beast. So I think it's time to go for another incubus. Let's get ourselves the Hall of Deceit. And I think in the next mission, uh, which I believe is the final mission, we'll go the whole altar worship shrine route for the um, full damage and see how that works out. Oh, yeah, here he comes. This is... Uh, interesting. <laughs> I wonder where, where he's actually going to go. 
he must have some sort of um, target in mind if he's going to start moving. Uh, Bizzik got a level up in the last turn, so that's marvellous. Um, let's give him pathfinding. Why not? Let's station him there because he got a little bit of damage. So now we've got to think about this encroaching madness. Um, I would have really liked to get whatever was in the haunted halls, but that's not look. Like, uh, it's not looking like it's going to happen. Um, so we can at least see what's actually inside the haunted halls, just to see what we would have been up against, just to see if we would have been able to to beat it. Uh, um, actually, no, I don't think we would because of this wraith. This is one of the undead hordes, uh, probably best units, I think. As as you can see, they're immune to weapon based damage. And uh, if we hadn't have upgraded the demonologist to an incubus, we would have been able to deal with this, but <laughs> we did because <laughs> he would normally have done fire based damage. But now the only damage we do with Mango's party is, is weapon based, so no, we wouldn't have been able to. And then, of course, the hellhound misses a couple of pretty nasty skeleton warriors as well, which do a lot of damage. That's the equivalent of our. Um, Anti-Paladins, I believe. And also a couple of Spectres to boot. Well, there we go. Looks like we might have to give that one a miss. Um, oh, by the way, um, <laughs> the Orc did actually come under our control, but his banner didn't change, so we didn't know that um, actually we were controlling him. So, uh, thanks a lot for that. Uh, other than that, I think it's just a case of us hanging fire and waiting until um, Astroth makes a move. So, we'll catch up then. Looks like things are getting a little bit hairy. In this next turn, Astaroth seems to have rather a large amount of movement points, although that might have been because he was following this path in the Empire Lands. And he's made it to our city of Rotterdam. Well, almost. We managed to get another spy in their army. Our previous spy was killed, so we've got another spy in there, and we can see Astaroth is accompanied by a Panda Menace and a Hag. We've also got a little entourage of this demon. Usual setup, we've seen that plenty of times before in this mission, so that's pretty standard. First thing I'm going to do is get Bizzik the hell out of here. Because that would just be suicide, let's face it. Um, I'm feeling reasonably good about this because we've got quite a lot of backline damage in the form of the Onyx Gargoyle and Mango himself. Just got to cycle through these idiots because we've got lots of orcs now for some reason in our army because pfft, I've no idea they're next to useless so let's bring mango up and round to guard these guys and then we can have a think about how we're going to deal with this in the next turn I think that's done let's end the end, uh, end the turn there I'll skip through the enemy turn and then we'll prepare ourselves for the final battle Oh, hello there. You join me browsing our spellbook to find a spell which is going to help us in this um, final battle. I'm liking the look of Torsio Menta, which is going to reduce the chance to hit of enchanted units by 30 33%. And we can afford it. 400 life, 800 infernal, and 400 death. Uh, so we can research and cast this in the same turn, which I'm going to do because it's time for the final battle. So let's get these casted. Whoops, that's the wrong screen. So go for Toshio Menta. Should hopefully come in handy, especially on the Hag. We don't want her polymorphing anyone. Then, what else do we have? Cursed Demonicus reduces by 50% the damage inflicted. That will also be very nice. I've just been researching these spells as I've been going along. Simply just to prepare us for this final battle. We've got Kronos, reduces by 15% the initiative of target units. That will also come in uh, fairly useful. I think the only other spells we have are actual direct damage ones. Which uh, I'm not too bothered about. 
Do we have any items which are going to help us? Any potions? So we've got... Um, okay, increases the chance to hit. That's probably going to be best off uh, with the Incubus. That re uh, raises that considerably. If we can stack up with this one, then that's an almost guaranteed hit. What else do we have? Potion of Strength increases by 30% the damage inflicted by enchanted units. I think I might give this to Mango, just so we can do uh, a nice bit of damage straight away. Hopefully might even be able to kill that Panda Menace. Uh, maybe. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to quickly save, just because I'm a chicken. <laughs> Let's give it a go. I believe in you, Mango. I'm not going to go into too much detail about the Panda Menace because we'll hopefully end up with our own in the next mission. That's the kind of upgrade path we're going to go down. Let's see how much damage Mango is doing. That is enough to kill the Panda Menace, I believe. Does he have any armor? He doesn't, so... Oh yeah, that's what I like to see. Hag is very slow, so we've got a chance to kill her outright with the combination of the Onyx Gargoyle and Beast, so I think we'll do that. But let's take a quick look at Astroth first. He's got immunities against Mind and Fire. This is going to probably be his downfall because our Incubus has a source of attack of Earth, so he's still going to be paralyzed by the Incubus. Uh, this is a bit of a crippling weakness on his behalf. Oh, he's going for a... A healing thing. He's drained his level. How rude. How did he manage to use an item and also... Oh, he takes two turns, doesn't he? That's right. That's a bit cheeky. That is... Uh, it's not too bad. I was rather hoping our Incubus would go first, considering we'd reduced the initiative of the Hag, but it seems it didn't work out that way. And I think this is game over for them, because they're petrified now. Let us... I'll kill the Hag with the Onyx Gargoyle, just because Mango's doing a lot uh, a lot more damage. And what would really rub salt in the wounds is if we managed to kill him with a Fat Imp. That would be fun. Yeah, he's just going to be petrified every turn. This is pretty much wrapped up. I'm glad I didn't go down the route of the... Um, the damage dealer, Mage as this it would have made it trickier. So he's doing a, a lot more damage than I expected him to. 150 damage times two, essentially. He gets a times two attack, which is very naughty indeed. That's the end of this. It's a bit of an anticlimax. I appreciate that. The Demon Lord Astroth brought to his knees by a simple... Uh, man woman hybrid thing in the back there there he goes any levels up uh no but quite a lot of xp for mango uh, he's not too far off another level there which is great uh oh, wow this is nice uh the leader equipped with this item will drain the levels of his enemies in battle if that means that they will demote if that's a word <laughs> demoted yeah, I think it is. If that means they, they reduce uh, from from the instance of a, a an anti-paladin down to a berserker, then that will happen. Which is, uh, obviously, Agony City for the enemies. Oh, you are formidable to have escaped my wrath, demons, but I cannot be stopped. Astroth has disappeared in a burst of flame. He has fled, but we are victorious. Tip mission has been successfully completed. Uther's betrayal would not go unpunished. His acts confirmed that the rites performed a decade ago had been at least partially successful. A part of Bethrazen's soul was housed in Uther's body. No mere boy could display such cunning without infernal inspiration. It explained many things. Now he says that, but he's obviously never grew up in the northeast of England. 
you knew some of the little shits that I knew, you'd change your mind in terms of the cunning and crazy schemes they can come up with. But anyway, let's uh, bring over Mango and some of the items he was holding. Uh, you know, I'm tempted to bring all this Ring of Strength with us um, going forward instead of the damage reduction items. Obviously, the banner is going to have to come over. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's the better reduction item, so we need that one. Um, boots of speed are also good. Um, but dare I do such a thing? I mean, going forward, it's going to increase his damage by another 20%. That's another 16 to 17 damage. Um, hmm, interesting. There is, of course, always the white blade as well. Um, but I think I'm going to pass on that one. It's, it's ridiculously useful on an area of effect damage dealing leader like the Archdevil as he reduces the level of all the people he attacks. Um, but I think I'm probably going to stick with the, the Holy Chalice. I'm going to pass on the Ring of Strength until we can probably, well, until we can get something better which increases his damage further, then I think I'll stick to, to, to the damage reduction ones. Um, but is the damage, is the white bear going to be more valuable than the ancient relic though? I think it is, based on the fact that it's worth 5,000 gold, um, as we tend to be, be able to sell it for about, you know, four fifths, sorry, a fifth of that. Anyway, I'll shut up. <laughs> we'll carry on. <laughs> Demon priests shed an ominous dream. Bethrazen was ailing, Uther was slowly draining his essence, and their unholy lord would surely die if Uther lived much longer. The remaining legions assembled in an attempt to destroy the awakening god. Uther had taken over part of the empire and still controlled many cohorts of demons. A desperate battle loomed on the horizon for the legion still loyal to Bethrazen seemed insufficient to battle their foe. Astaroth stood alongside the newly born demon, ready to champion Uther, the next ruler of hell. Wow. Who would have thought that would have happened? Little boy taking over the legions of hell. His parents must be very proud. Anyway, let's see. Oh god, I needed a voice for demon Uther. And be warned, you have challenged me for the last time. Your presence here is an insult to me and to hell itself. I'll do. You are not our master. Bethrazen will come to our aid. Fools, you have been blinded. Bethrazen's powers will soon be mine. Master, an infernal rift opens before us. We must protect it from demon Uther's claws. Bethrazen will send aid through the rift. He has revealed it to me in a dream. Mmm, sexy little wet dream. Mm, filthy boy. Well then, uh, is this the is this the last mission? I can't remember. We've got all the we've got all the lords here, so it's looking that way. For some reason, we're on more friendly terms with the dwarves than anyone else, which <laughs> is interesting. So at the moment we've got Ignos, the demonologist. Um, sorry, he's not a Pokemon. He doesn't just say his name all the time. And we've got, of course, Mango. So we're going to have to figure out what we're going with in terms of um, our final party. I'm not going to equip the White Blade because, like I said, it's it's use is limited on a single target um, leader. So yeah, we need to, whoops, I don't know why I clicked that. So we need to figure out what we're going to have in Mango's final party. Let's pop him on the front line because he's probably best off, uh, better suited there. So let's have a quick look round. We've got some, uh, the usual crap to begin with. Do have this guy, which might be nice to do a bit of scouting for us. And I think our quest objective was to just kill Uther, wasn't it? Come on, uh, destroy Demon Uther and protect the Infernal Rift. Ah, and protect the Infernal Rift. So it's probably imperative we get to uh, this area, ASAP, and get that protected. But anyway, let's bring this episode to a close. It seems like the best time to do so. Um, so we'll save setting up 
for the, the campaign ahead for the next episode. And I'll see you then, Questers. So, ta-ta for now.